What many people don't even know is that the Soviet Union was the very first nation on this planet to put a spacecraft on Mars in 1971. NASA just found declassified evidence of this landing, which was kept secret from the world public for a long time. But what were the Soviets doing on Mars? And why did they never talk about their discoveries? The answers to these questions are staggering and startling. For decades, no one knew that the Soviet Union was the first nation on Earth to secretly guide and place a first lander on Mars. Only decades later did the rest of the world take note of an incredible mission. Mars 3 was a successful mission. But why did the Soviet Union prefer to keep it a secret? In the race for the advantages in space, the country could have wiped out the USA, which had just captured the moon at that time. The answer to this question is easy to understand. Mars 3 successfully reached Mars, landed there as well, but sent data only for a short time. Basically, the probe failed just before it had collected all the data from Mars. This was reason enough for the Soviet Union not to share the triumph. They had hoped for a sensational find. Imagine if Soviets had first published images of settlement remains on Mars or evidence of bacterial life in the 1970s. It was just such a sensation that the Soviets were looking for not a report from a probe that reached Mars but then failed after a short time. The nation's pride would not allow it. The U.S. had put men on the moon, more Apollo missions were planned, and the world cheered with the Americans. The report of a more or less successful Mars probe by America's arch enemy, the Soviet Union, would have been completely lost in the news. Secretly, the engineers continued to work. New Mars probes should bring new successes and pave the way for the first Russians on Mars then the triumph would have been perfect. Mars 3. What did the probe discover? On December 2, 1971, the Soviet probe landed on the surface of Mars. This was long before the USA approached Mars or managed to land its own probe there. However, the historic moment of landing the first man-made object on Mars was celebrated by the Soviets in silence. No one was aware of the action. Those responsible were shocked when the lander's signal stopped only a few seconds after the landing. For a long time, it was a mystery what the probe had found in the few seconds it was active on Mars. Even when it became known that the Soviet Union had landed on Mars, researchers and officials kept the readings to themselves. This changed with the end of the Cold War and with the collapse of the Soviet Union. There was a pleasant rapprochement between East and West, which even led to joint actions. Russian astronauts now share the ISS with Americans and Europeans. But back to Mars 3 and the long secret measurement data, as well as the very first image of the surface of Mars. Mars 3 determined that the surface pressure is significantly lower than Earth's, and the spacecraft provided measurement data of the predominantly carbon dioxide atmosphere. Onboard instruments recorded a surface temperature of negative 110 degrees Celsius. Despite its short operational time, the Mars 3 mission achieved something incredible. The first image ever taken of the Martian surface. The grainy black and white image showed the desolate landscape. Today, these first successes are hailed retrospectively, but it came as a shock to the Soviet Union. They had secretly hoped to find better conditions on Mars in order to be able to shine soon with a spaceship that brought Russians to the planet. Then finally the nation tormented by the moon successes of the USA, could have made a cosmic counterattack. The Mars 1 and 2 missions The Mars 3 mission was just the tip of the iceberg in an ambitious program. The first mission, Mars 1, launched in 1962 with the goal of collecting data on the interplanetary space between Earth and Mars. Flying once past Mars and gathering first impressions of the surface, Radio contact was lost on March 21, 1963. Later analysis showed that a malfunction in the orientation sensors caused a total power failure. Mars 2 embarked on its own journey on March 19, 1971. The dual probe, consisting of an orbiter and a lander, reached its destination. While the orbiter successfully collected data, the descent module crashed upon entering the Martian atmosphere. Mars 3 was finally to bring great success. The mission was a step forward, but did not bring the great success they hoped for. Fierce Competition Between East and West The 20th century was marked by unprecedented rivalry between the superpowers, the United States, and the Soviet Union. 
The space race became a symbolic arena for this competition, in which each nation strove to demonstrate its absolute technological and scientific superiority. The US and the Soviets were in constant competition politically, militarily, and scientifically. The Soviet Union could never keep up with the economic success of the USA. Politically, they had split after the Second World War, and militarily, the largest arms race of all time was underway. The Soviets were determined to beat the US in space and science. Spurred on by early successes with the launch of Sputnik, the first artificial satellite, and the first manned spaceflight with Yuri Gagarin, the country pushed its actions ever further. The US responded with its own triumphs and the historic moon landings of the Apollo missions. But while the US made its space missions transparent and media-friendly, the Soviet Union took a different approach. While the failures and successes of the Venera missions to Venus were shared with the public, the Soviets kept their Mars program entirely to themselves. Today, it's rumored that the Soviet Venus missions were just a red herring. No one reckoned that the red communist and socialist nation had secretly put out feelers for Mars. What a triumph it would have been if Soviet spacemen had stuck a red flag in the red Mars dust but the triumph of having won the red planet for themselves was denied to the communists. Mars 3 and the two predecessor probes were concealed. The secrecy of the failed Mars missions was not just a matter of pride, but of national security. In an era when any sign of failure was seen as a sensitive weakness, the Soviet Union chose to conceal the Mars setback. Presumably, the Soviets also feared spies from the West who might learn sensitive data. Imagine that a U.S. spy got hold of the measurement data from Soviet probes and that this data, of all things, would then have given the U.S. an advantage when it came to sending humans to Mars. The U.S. had announced this goal. First the Moon, then Mars. To date, and more than 45 years later, neither the U.S., nor Russia, nor the Soviet Union has sent humans to Mars. The challenges were greater than imagined. Both nations have experienced severe setbacks due to economic and social crises. While in the U.S., the poor and especially the African-American community railed against the immense expense of the Apollo missions and other space goals, in the East, the entire state of the Soviet Union collapsed in the early 1990s. Today, NASA's overall budget has increased again, but it's still small compared to the pioneering days of the 1960s and 1970s. Russia is also making headway again on the international space stage, but the successor nation to the Soviet Union also has to cope with shorter budgets. The Technology Behind the Mars Missions Like the Venera probes, the Soviet Mars missions are now considered milestones in space exploration. It's admirable how the engineers and scientists overcame all the technological challenges, and certainly the Soviet Union would have succeeded in sending probes to Mars if it had not run out of funds and ambition. In the Venera project, probe after probe was sent off. Failure served to make the probes better and better until Venera 13 finally sent the best and only images of the surface of inhospitable Venus. The successes of the Mars probes would have been a matter of time. The distance between Earth and Mars varied from 54.6 million kilometers to 401 million kilometers depending on their positions in their respective orbits. Mars 1 and 3 had extremely precise navigation systems to ensure that the spacecraft reached their destination. Communication was to be smooth via extremely powerful antennas and receivers. Automatic control systems envisioned that all Mars probes could also operate autonomously. At that time, the communication delay between Earth and Mars was as long as 22 minutes. The landers of the Mars 2 and 3 missions were particularly innovative. They were equipped with parachutes to reduce speed during descent and with deceleration rockets to ensure a soft landing. This is exactly how NASA's first rovers landed many years later. The surface of Mars is rough and unpredictable, and landers had to be rugged enough to withstand the impact and extreme temperatures. There is no question that the Soviet Union would have mastered this sooner or later. After all, it had managed to send probes that could withstand the harsh conditions of Venus, the hottest planet in the solar system. The instruments on the Mars missions were sophisticated. They included cameras to photograph the Martian surface 
and spectrometers and other sensors to analyze the composition of the Martian soil and atmosphere. Overall, then, the Soviet Mars missions were impressive examples of technological innovation and engineering prowess. The Future of Mars Exploration In the 2020s, Mars exploration is still at the beginning of an exciting journey. Exploration of the Red Planet has picked up considerably in recent decades, and the future promises even greater discoveries. With advances in technology and renewed interest in interplanetary missions, the prospects are good for soon sending humans to a planet beyond Earth. It is in no small part the commitment of multi-billionaire Elon Musk that has given renewed impetus to the now peaceful space race. Five nations currently have rovers and probes on Mars or in orbit around it. Rover missions like Curiosity and Perseverance send new highlights daily. Roscosmos, the successor organization to the Soviet Space Agency, has plans to join with the European Space Agency, ESA, to send the ExoMars orbiter and a rover named Rosalind Franklin to Mars. The goal of the two is to find signs of life on the Red Planet. This mission is on hold due to the renewed political tension. Russia's political behavior isolates it once again and could cause it to miss the race to Mars. Don't miss the upcoming top videos and subscribe to our channel now.